This is section 9.9 .9 of Honors Algebra 2, systems of linear equations in three variables. So we've done systems of equations in two variables. Now we have three variables. And so instead of just x and y, we have x, y, and z. And so instead of an ordered pair, we have an ordered triple. The x value comma the y value comma the z value. And when we plot these points, we plot them in three dimensions. So you'll see here the point 2, negative 4, 3. And it's plotted three-dimensionally. To get a sense of how this is working, you see the x-axis right there, and the y-axis horizontally there, and the z-axis is vertical. They meet at a common point, the origin. This that I'm shading in green right now is what would normally be the first quadrant of no, that's not right. This is what I'm shading in green here right now would normally be the second quadrant of our typical xy coordinate plane. It's where x is positive and y is negative. This that I'm shading in green here right now would normally be the first quadrant of our xy coordinate plane where the x and y are positive. So it's taken that, let's put it down horizontally, and then made z go vertically up and down. We'll look at that more in class, but just know that we can plot these in their three-dimensional graphs. And so the graph of a linear equation in three variables is a plane rather than a line we end up with a whole, flat, infinitely large surface. And so a system of linear equations in three variables will be the graphs of three planes. And those three planes can interact in six different ways. Remember when we had systems of two equations with two variables, we had two lines. And either those lines intersected in one point, giving us one solution. Or they were parallel, giving us no solutions. Or they were the same line, giving us infinitely many solutions. Well, now we have three planes, and there's six different ways that three planes can interact. First way is for them all to intersect in exactly one point, that red dot that's in the center of this um, A diagram. That will lead to one solution. So that is sort of the ideal situation, that we get exactly one point where these three different planes interact. That is not always what happens, though. It could be the case that the three planes interact as they do in diagram B here, where any two planes intersect to form a line, but there's no place where all three planes are intersecting. And so that would give us no solution. Or it could be the case, as it is in part C here, that two of the planes are parallel. So they will never intersect, and then one cuts through them. That also gives us no solution, because there's no points that all three planes have in common. Or it could be the case that all three planes intersect together on exactly one line. This line right here. Remember, these planes don't stop, so this line doesn't stop either. And that would give us every point on that line as a solution. So how many solutions is that? Infinitely many. Very good. Every point on that line would be a solution. And so we could actually, in that case, give the equation of the line. That would be the solution. Or it could be the case, and I don't have a picture for this, it could be the case that all three planes are parallel. There's one, there's one, and there's one. And so there's no place where any of them intersect. That would be no solution. Or it could be the case that our three equations actually have the same plane as their graphs. And we have all three planes that are the same. thus giving us infinitely many solutions with every point on those planes. Uh, a solution to the equation. The solving of a system of equations with three variables is not all that different from solving a system of two equations with two variables. In fact, 
what we will be doing on example number two is just trying to get it down to a system of two equations and then solve it from there. But example number one here is a very simple equation, a very simple system, I mean, because our third equation is already giving us the value of one of the variables, z equals three. That's awesome. We already know one of the variables now, so we just have to find x and y. So we can plug three in for z in the other two equations. And normally when we do this, we number the equations, so we'll call that equation number one and equation number two. And equation number three is already solved. So let's plug in three for z in equation number one and equation number two. So equation number one becomes two x plus three y plus six equals 13, which means 2x plus 3y equals 7. And equation number 2 becomes 2y plus 3 equals 1. Well, that just has a y in it, so we can quickly solve that and get that y equals negative 1. So that's awesome. We now have two variables. We just need to find the third one. And so I could plug that in to my new equation number one so that all I have left is the x that's right there. So 2x minus 3 equals 7 2x then equals 10 and x equals 5. Now how do I state my answer? I state my answer as a point an ordered triple 5 negative one, three, x, y, z. Now, so my solution set is that point right there. So that's the way I'm going to state my answer. That was a fairly simple system of three equations, three variables. That process of what we did of having one value, plugging it in to find a second value and plugging both of them in to find the third value is essentially the process behind what's called Gaussian elimination, which is the method we're going to use in example number two. Gaussian elimination, named for the mathematician Carl Friedrich Gauss, who lived um, in the 17 to 1800s. That process is to take your three equations of three variables and reduce them down to two equations with two variables. And that we know how to solve and we'll be able to get it down to one equation with one variable, solve for that variable, take that one, plug it back into one of the two equations with two variables and find the other one. Then we'll have two variables and we'll be able to take both of them back into uh, one of our original equations to find the third variable. So we're going to walk through this one step by step performing that Gaussian elimination process. So x plus y minus 2z equals 7, negative x plus 4y plus 3z equals 2, 2x minus 3y plus 2z equals negative 2. What we want to do is take two different pairs of equations and eliminate the same variable in both of those pairs. So I look at these and I see that x would be rather easy to eliminate because I number my equations, number 1, number 2, and number 3. Equation number 1 plus equation number two is immediately going to eliminate x. So let's do that. Equation number one plus equation number two will give me five y, the x is canceled, and I have five y plus one z plus z equals nine. So now I have one equation that just involves y and z. What I want to do is get a second equation that just involves y and z and then I'll be able to solve for y and z and then go back and find x. So the way I can get the second equation is to, let's say I take equation number two here and I multiply it by two. That will give me negative two x plus eight y plus six z equals four. I've multiplied both sides of the equation, everything in it, by two. If I then just take equation number three the way it is, it has a positive 2x, which when I add it to my new equation number two will cancel out those x's, giving me 5y plus 8z equals two.
So now, I've got two equations, each with y and z, this one and this one. And now I know how to solve that. What I can do is cancel out the y's by multiplying this one by negative one, giving me negative five y minus eight z equals negative two. I'm gonna add that to this one, five y plus z equals nine. Add those together, the y's cancel, I get negative six, negative seven, sorry. Negative seven z equals seven. So z equals negative one. So I have one of the variables. I know its value. So I can take that value for z and I can plug it in to one of my two boxed in equations here to find y because those two equations only involve y and z. So if I have z I can easily find y. So if I plug it into this one up here I'll have 5y now minus 1 equals 9 so 5y equals 10 and y equals 2. I could plug it into the other um, box in equation down on the bottom and I would get the same value. So I've got y is 2, z is negative 1, all I need to do is find x and I can go back to any one of my three original equations. Plug in 2 for y and negative 1 for z and solve for x. So if I just plug it into equation number 1, which looks like the easiest one, I've got x plus 2 minus 2 times negative 1 equals 7. So x plus 2 plus 2 equals 7, x plus 4 equals 7, and x equals 3. State my answer as the solution set consisting of the point 3, 2, negative one. Now if we wanted to, we could check our answer by plugging that point into all three equations and making sure it works in all three equations. Now let's try example number three. So let's say that I try to eliminate x. I could try to eliminate y or z, doesn't matter, but let's go with x again that one looks fairly easy. Let's call this equation number one, equation number two, and equation number three. And let's say I take negative two times equation number one. That will give me negative two x plus four y plus two z equals positive two. And the reason I chose negative two is so that when I add it to equation number two, the x's cancel. So I get 3y plus 3z equals 3. All right, now I have one equation of y and z. Let's get another equation of y and z. Let's say I take negative 2 times equation number 3. That will give me negative 2x minus 8y minus 10z equals negative 10. If I add that to equation number 2 the way it is, 2x minus y plus z equals 1. And the x's cancel and I get negative 9y minus 9z equals negative 9. So now I've got two equations of y and z. And let's try to solve those. So let me take uh, 3 times this one so that I have a positive 9y plus 9z equals 9 add it to this one, negative 9y minus 9z equals negative 9. The y's cancel. The z's also cancel. That leaves me with 0 on the left-hand side. And 9 minus 9 is 0 on the right-hand side. What do I do? Well, that means that I must have, since this is a true statement, I must have infinitely many solutions. But what's cool about this is we can actually say something about what those infinitely many solutions are. Let's say, for instance, that we take 3y plus 3z 
equals 3, which is this equation up here. Let's solve that for y. Let's divide everything by 3. We'll get y plus z equals 1. That means y is 1 minus z. So for all of these infinitely many solutions, it must be the case that y is 1 minus z every time. And then I can take that and I can simplify, I can, sorry, substitute that into, say, our original first equation. And I can do this with any of the original equations, but I'll do it in the original one, the first one. Substitute y minus z in for y in the first equation. And let's solve that for x. So x minus 2 plus 2z minus z equals negative 1. That means that if I add 2 to the other side and then combine the z's, x plus z equals 1. So x equals 1 minus z. So for every one of these infinite and many solutions, whatever z is, if I take 1 minus that, I will get the value for x and I will get the value for y. So the x and the y values of every one of these points has to be the same. So we can write our solution set as the set of all points of the form y minus z comma, I'm sorry, 1 minus z comma 1 minus z, those are x and y's, comma z such that z is in the real numbers. So you know the symbol for real numbers. This symbol so it looks like a backwards curved E thing. That means is in or is an element of the set. So here would be all of our solutions. All the points of the form 1 minus z, 1 minus z, z for any real number z. If I take any real number z, I can get a, um, an infinite number of solutions. So the solution to this system is a plane that has all of these points as there. Um, it has all of these points in it. Now here's your immediate practice problem. Solve the system, state your answer as an ordered triple, and I gave you an easy one that will be just like example number one. That is the end of section 9.9. .9.